Here we go. All right. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to um, our, our my video channel here on YouTube. And today, in this conversation, um, I have a special guest with me, Jason Corwin, who will introduce himself in a moment. Uh, but the first thing I want to do is, is let you know uh, what we're talking about in this video. Uh, today, what we're going to be discussing is the importance of tipping and off-speed shots, um, how to do it effectively, and more specifically, we're going to try to dive into uh, some of the misconceptions about um, how to develop the tip shot, how to teach it, um, and we'll cover some stuff uh, that we typically see coaches all across the country talking about, um, and, and, and maybe kind of show you how what we commonly think about tipping and, and what to teach is not exactly um, what actually happens in the real game. And, uh, and we'll get into that. So if you're interested in, um, in that, if that's what you're here for, then stick around and uh, be sure to watch through the uh, entire conversation. That said, uh, my name is Mike G, I'm Coach Mike G, and, uh, and I work with North Pacific Juniors uh, Volleyball Club out of Oregon. And uh, today with me, uh, I have uh, a friend of mine who also coaches with us um, and also coaches college, Jason Corwin. Jason, hello. Hello. Thanks for having me. <clears throat> and uh, so I said, coach uh, Northwest Christian University out of Eugene. Uh, we are going through a name change. So a little plug there, Bushnell University after July 1st. Um, and uh have the privilege of uh, coaching at uh, North Pacific Juniors uh, Volleyball. Um, had the 15s groups, pretty special group, and uh, last year, uh, too bad the uh, Susan season got cut off a little bit. Uh, but uh, uh, being able to uh, coach for North Pacific and and have conversations with you on how to be a better coach, and and I see this as an opportunity right now. Thanks for having me, Mike. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for for taking the time to to chat with me. And, um, you know, like you and I had discussed before we went online here, um, you know, at the risk of this not being perfectly what we want it to be and for the whole video being absolutely the greatest thing since sliced bread, uh, we didn't want that to prevent us from having this conversation. Uh, and so the hope, uh, what was that line that you said? Um, if we, if we work on being really good or being good, a lot of the time, great things happen. So with that being said, uh, we're, we're aiming to be, be good uh, with our conversation and, and video content here. <laughs> <laughs> we hope that you find this useful. Yeah. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna have to do is probably share my screen here. And uh, we are going to start with this video here, share screen. Optimize screen, that seems like a good thing to do. I'm just gonna share my entire screen just in case, it makes it easier. And then hang on one last second while I put my show video panel. All right, hopefully that gets our, our face on there. <laughs> All right, how's it looking on your end? Looks good. Okay, so I went full screen here. I don't know if that's, yeah. that's gonna help. Okay, um, first thing first, uh, I want you to understand that we're going, oh, I want viewers to understand that in this video, we're looking at uh, some elite level, uh, international level, professional level men's volleyball. And I, I need us all to appreciate the fact that um, a lot of our athletes, especially my athletes, right, working in the 18 and under, um, juniors volleyball we're not playing this high above the net we don't have the same kind of um, hang time and and uh, point of contact 10 11 feet off the ground uh, but one thing that I've uh, I know to be true is that fundamental movements look the same regardless of your gender or age um, or uh, or, or, or age, okay? So when we're talking about, um, you know, drawing the arm back, uh, arm prep before we tip, um, approach footwork, things like that, um, 
I want everybody to trust that uh, that it's it's applicable to uh, all ages um, and male or female. So uh, the first thing I guess I want to address is this idea that you know the approach should always look the same. You want to sell uh, your your approach as if you're going to go up and hit it hard, um, and that's one thing that I often hear coaches talking about, I often see in, in tutorial videos. And the other thing that I always th seem to, to, to see is that your elbow has to come all the way back and you really want to draw that thing back, whether you call it the uh, Zeus position or, um, you know, Jason, I don't know what terminology you use for arm prep and elbow back, but, um, but you get the point. And I think what we're trying to get at as coaches there is we want you to be deceptive um, and not show the tip and that is 100 percent in agreement. i'm in agreement with that um, but that cannot be the only thing that as coaches we we talk about and teach to our players because the reality of it is this uh, we all say that to our players and majority of the time we never see that actually happen we find ourselves repeating ourselves and getting frustrated when uh, when a kid goes up, the elbow doesn't go back, they show the tip right away, and it, it sometimes works and it sometimes doesn't, okay? But uh, what I want to get at is um, why that uh, so often that those two things, hard approach and elbow back, um, are, are not the case. And the third thing that I commonly hear and see coaches talking about is the idea of um, – slowing your arm down to execute the roll shot off speed or tip. And, uh, and I'm going to challenge that, uh, that concept uh, as well. So let's watch some video here. Sandman. <laughs> it's the first person I thought of when you gave me this topic. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it, absolutely. So good at it, so yeah. good. Okay, so what are some things that I think that we're seeing here? I think that I'm seeing a degree uh, to the best of their ability, maybe in the situation, um, to be deceptive, to do something in their approach, their movement, to uh, hide their true intentions to tip, roll shot, and off speed. Uh, would you agree there? I know we've only yes. watched a few clips. One, yes, thing that I, one thing that I want to point out here is that a lot of times we tip out of necessity, okay? Yeah. So somewhere along this approach, maybe here, um, as a hitter, we realize, uh-oh, the timing, positioning, relationship here is off. You know, notice how the ball is midline or behind the attacker or yeah. and up behind the attacker. I can't bang this ball. I can't yeah. drive this ball down. Um, maybe I can't even see the block because now I'm looking up and behind myself here. And so in, in situations like that, you know, we're not necessarily in total control of um, the fact that, you know what? We, we have to tip. We have to roll shot here. Mm -hmm. Second thing here is I hope, and I'll just let the next few clips play out again, is I want you to notice how um, the arm does not start fast and then slow down, okay? So when it gets into that, these, these elbows get into this open uh, hitting position, we don't start off seeing this ballistic, forceful, you know, torque and initial arm speed followed by a deceleration. Uh, and the reason we don't see that is because uh, I don't know that our arm is capable of starting out uh, so aggressively and explosively uh, and then you know, having some sort of gradual braking or slowdown. It's kind of, I think of it like this. If your car is driving along you know, at, at a steady speed, and, uh, and all of a sudden you have to stop, like you, you, 
you typically slam on the brakes and, and, and come to an abrupt stop, right? You don't always yeah. get that gradual, oh, the light's turning yellow, I'm not gonna make it, I better ease on to the pedal. Yeah. Um, that's not how uh, it, it works here with, with off speed and roll shot. So notice how um, you're gonna see an arm that is not slowing down. I think what it's doing, it's, it's, it's just moving slower and sometimes it's even speeding up, uh, even though we're not um, going full force, full speed. So, you know, to the viewers, let's see if you catch that. So, so what do you think? In, in, in what you're seeing, Jason, are we seeing the arm starting fast and slowing down just before we hit, or are we seeing something else? No. <clears throat> um, I see them working hard to get their shoulder back, and then as they, as they swing to hit the ball, um, their body position is, I don't know if that's dictating their, their arm swing. They're, they're swinging more up at the ball. And, but the speed itself isn't going fast and slowing down to achieve that. I it seems agree. like more of a body position and hitting and hitting up at the ball. Yeah. So let's 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 draw uh, another example: uh, the short serve, right? Okay. If we're mm -hmm. talking about a standing float serve and we want a kid to to drop it down there short, um, one of the things that we find is that the ball needs to be tossed back towards the server or we need to step more underneath the ball to serve it up and short would you agree yes and and i think that's what we're seeing here with these off speed and i see that all the time and i and i think it's one of the um advantages or maybe even necessities to position ourselves more forward or under the ball so that we can shape that ball and, and start it upwards um, in, 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 in like we're seeing here in these examples. Is that what you're kind of getting at? Yeah, you know, and I, I watched the first one in, uh, with uh, Taylor Sanders and I wonder because the middle bit, he's got a one-on-one -on -one block and you know, if you've watched Taylor Sanders hit, he gets a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, it, it's, uh, it's almost unstoppable. And, but he's not. And so at what point does he make the decision that he's going to versus a one-on-one -on -one block do an off speed? And, uh, you know, we, is that because the set is not at three feet, but it's more at five feet that dictated his action? Or is it because he's been pounding the ball super hard, they're on their heels, and mm -hmm. he's making a choice to make a shot that he thinks he's going to score uh, yeah. versus a one-on-one? -on -one. So. That's, that's such an insightful um you know, thought there because when I was clipping these, these video, uh, these, these putting this montage together, I did notice that a lot of the tips and roll shots were coming off of, um, free ball situations actually. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so, you know, those are times when you think, Hey, if we're getting a free ball, let's ram it down their throat. Right. And, um, and, and I think uh, there's an advantage, uh, strategically there right because the defense is certainly going to think oh they're they're going to crush this and and now oh my god my middle committed and i'm one-on-one -on -one with taylor sanders like yeah. you know let me they're dig bracing. in here they're bracing <laughs> exactly so uh, to take advantage of that and um you know at your question at what point do they decide does a hitter decide you know it it varies right it yeah. uh it, it totally varies and i think hopefully what we want to encourage and, and allow our athletes the, uh, uh, the opportunity to get at is um, you're going to get, you're going to make these, uh, these decisions way faster than you're capable of consciously breaking it down and thinking through it, you know? Right. And, uh, and, and I think that's the fun and the beauty of sport and chasing this state of flow is that um you know, we want what we call this perception action coupling, right? Like what mm -hmm. we see and perceive will then dictate how we act and respond and what we execute. And as coaches, you know, um, Kendall and I were kind of talking about this in this last video I put together. 
um, you know, it's the idea that if, if my athletes are only capable of doing the things that I teach them and, you know, say I'm a coach that only allows them to, 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 only, to ever do the things that I teach them, you know, how limiting that would be and yeah. how long it would take an athlete to develop the kind of range and freedom and confidence to, uh, to, to, you know, add these things to their game. Yeah. All right. So let's keep, uh, where were we? We're about this part here. Okay. So there's only a couple of these ones, but you know, remember when I said, uh, I don't think the arm is starting fast and moving slower. I think it's relative to a hard hit ball. It's moving slower to begin with. And at other times the arm is actually speeding up. Yeah. Um, and so in these two particular clips, uh, I, I chose to, to bring these in here because you can see it's a tip, but the arm is moving, is accelerating. Watch. Do you see that? Yeah. Slow, slow to fast. And, and it's situational, right? It's like the ball was out in front, uh, couldn't quite reach it. Um, and so, you know, let's, as coaches, let's not forget that this is a big part of the game and it happens quite a bit and your, your hitters will gain a huge advantage if they understand that, uh, that tipping can also mean my arm is accelerating. It's not always slowing down. It's not, it's certainly not yeah. going fast than slow. <laughs> so the situation is dictating the action versus, hey, we have a common, this is what you do when you tip. Yeah, to it, and yes. And we're gonna see exactly this right here. I mean, this is awesome. You would never teach this, right? But you would, <laughs> right. you would just give the freedom, the space to your athletes to problem solve, uh, however the situation dictates, and you celebrate the, the amazing moments and athletes they are. Let's uh, let's watch this. Whoop. Yeah, yeah. Let's let's play that one more time. And we've all seen clips like this. Hopefully, look at that. I've got a player who's got a highlight high school highlight video doing this, but she spun the ball to the corner. <laughs> Dude, that's so sweet. Yeah, and you don't teach that. You can't teach that. You, you just can't. for an athlete. And um, and I think um, you know I think that we oh, what am i trying to say here you know it, w we say things like we can't teach that and yeah no don't please don't waste a whole lot of time trying to teach those things yeah. uh, but what we can teach is uh we can teach ourselves that when we're designing our practice environments um we can design in these opportunities or affordances for athletes to um to come up with those kinds of movement solutions yeah. right here's the problem My, the problem is this ball is going to go out and behind me and if i don't want to get blocked or make an error i need to do something i need to do something here and um you know it's these are athletes uh, we're working with, right? Like, yeah, exactly. And we, we talk about like guidelines and standard or standards. And then there's guidelines. Hey, this is what we think. And this is what we'll train um, to help you as a guideline. But somebody, you know, hits a crossbody line shot on the pin and there's no block there. And it's, it's our right back defender who's on an island, you know, and they chicken wing the ball with their elbow. And, and the ball go and it's dug and it's not on the floor. How how can I as a coach complain about that? You know the ball's off the floor, uh, and we're making a we're we're still playing. Um, now I'm not going to dedicate a lot of time to everybody learning how to do a chicken wing dig. Mm -hmm. I just say thank you very much for being an athlete and and making a play, given yeah. the circumstance. Yeah, absolutely. And actually, I I'm going to pause this for a second because mm -hmm. I want to. Uh, I want to get into kind of exactly that. Um, oh boy. Is my screen still being shared? Yeah, it is. Perfect. 
Wait, no. Nope. Uh-uh. Go back. Dang it. I think I had what I wanted. All right. Stop share. <laughs> uh, this is actually not where I intended to go with this, but I'm trying to find my um, this other presentation and clip that I have because there's that great play that uh, Steph Curry made, a uh, basketball player for the Golden State Warriors. And um, Mark Jackson, who was a, a great player and, and, and coach in the NBA, and he was commentating um, this moment. And he, he watches Steph Curry just dribble around in between his legs, behind his back, in between like four defenders. Uh, and then step backs, launches a three, sinks it. And he's like, that might be the greatest play I've ever seen. Right. And, yeah. uh, and, um, uh, I want to just show that. And I want to then also show, um, his coach's reaction, Steve wow. Kerr. And I'm just praying cause I've set it up here. I'm just praying that it's here. Okay. I have it. <laughs> This is my updated version of the uh, CLA PowerPoint that I did. Okay, are you seeing my screen? Yes. Awesome. How do I do this? How do, dude, how do you just view? Enable editing. How do you just view like full screen? Okay. Security alert. Uh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> Play. You might need to do the enable editing. I thought that I did. Hmm. Hey, what's going on here? Are these? Whoa. None of these videos oh. are working. Go into present mode. Present mode? Yeah. It should be, yeah, slideshow. Should be present. There it is right there on the left. Present only. Enable. Hmm. Connect? I don't know. Yeah. It's not showing the link because it's not a present. No. All right. Well, okay. Anyway, we'll come back to that later. But uh, okay. the point there is um, Steph sinks the shot and the cameraman pans to Steve Kerr coaching on the sidelines and catches his reaction. And, um, and it's, <laughs> you can see him going, no, what, what, what are you? Oh my gosh, this is crazy. And uh, he throws his arms in the air, sits down and you can just see this, you know, smile on his face from ear to ear. And yeah. it's, it's that idea that, uh, you know, there are just some things we're not going to be able to control or coach. Uh, yeah. uh, and that's okay. Because when we give them the freedom, the space to um, really, explore and demonstrate their own athletic capabilities these just these remarkable moments can happen yeah i mean those last two clips you know as the they're almost broken plays one is a, a one-hand set that you know is not going to have a lot of height to it so the hitter sees it speeds up his approach almost it's not even really an approach it's this hurry up and run to the net and uh, he jumps and and his hand you know contacts the ball as soon as he as soon as he can, there's nobody even there. Mm -hmm. um, and then the next one is the, the ball's dropping on the middle and he's got to get his hand to the ball fast. Uh, and so he speeds it up and he, and he, he's able to make a play. Oh, what a dig there. <laughs> <laughs> right. Look at this. What about that? Yeah. Oh, what, wow. Yeah. What is up with this? Uh, I'm not, I'm certainly not seeing a full approach, I'm not selling the hard hit. Yeah. And, and I, I just don't want coaches to miss this. I don't want them to miss the fact that these moments, these situations, and these movement solutions present themselves all of the time. And when I think back to myself as a young coach, I ignored them. 
I ignored them because they weren't things that I could coach. They weren't things that I thought were, um, you know, important for, for players to learn. And nowadays I find out that like all of the things that I want to teach them happen so much less than all of these other things, these nuances that are way more frequent. And, um, you know, if we don't want players always looking over to us for all the answers and being distracted uh, in between rallies and, and looking at us or their parents, like for help or the answers, yeah. then we got to create these, um, you know, I, I'm going to say these simulation environments where what they're, what we're simulating for them, what they're experiencing represents the real thing. I mean, uh, I keep talking about um, SpaceX and the um, and Bob and Doug, the U.S. astronauts that just went into space recently. Mm -hmm. um, and the the idea there is, I'm, I'm now I'm losing my train of thought uh, where I was going with this, but um, it's the idea that, um, gosh, I totally lost my train of thought. Why am I talking about Bob and Doug and SpaceX? Um, I think maybe because it's like they're going to find these, these answers, these solutions to these age old problems, um, in, in new and different ways. If we allow, um, the space for that. Oh, and as far as the simulation goes, uh, they, uh, one of them was quoted saying, you know, congratulations to the SpaceX engineers because the simulation was exactly like what they experienced, um, in, in the launch and yeah. uh and and docking and they just said bob and doug were just you know saying hey like what a great job that you all did um because we we couldn't have felt uh more prepared for what we had to do and that is just awesome mm -hmm. and, but that puts a, a little bit of pressure on coaches here in accepting um players execution of their own athleticism uh and, and and that starts in practice i mean i i've done this and i've seen this uh, a lot where I, I think you can you can go a long ways to inhibiting an athlete's expression um just by saying hey i know you achieved the result but you did it the wrong way um and i i think there's got to be a balance between you know yes we have some standards and yes we have guidelines um and uh, yes, there, there's value in having everybody on the same page. Um, but I, I think what we're learning or what I'm learning is that it can't be at the expense of the athlete being an athlete and using all the collective experience that they're bringing to the table, especially at 18 to 22 years old. They've played for a lot of years for a lot of coaches and collected a lot of reps. And um and so when we're in practice and we see those opportunities present themselves, I think it's, it's a moment to celebrate um, and encourage um, athletes to, to explore and to try and uh, to express themselves as athletes, given the situation, um, to try and achieve the result and the standard that we're after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a huge challenge. Um, and you know, I, I, I heard a few coaches talking about athleticism as I've, you know, um, made new connections in, in the coaching world and starting to learn from, from more coaches out there. Uh, and, you know, to their credit, you know, I, I had never really thought about how I as the coach could limit my athletes in such a way that would stunt their athleticism or like take it away you know it's these coaches who say hey we got a kid in our gym who jumps fast she's dynamic she's explosive she's quick um why would i want to take any of that away from her with my system or tactics or um simply saying uh eh, that you're not quite doing it right or the way that we're we we're, we're, we're want it done and i think of um you know jenny lang peng uh who coached for um the u.s um women's Olympic team, uh, mm -hmm. won a silver medal. It's, there's a documentary coming out on her. She's like the greatest coach of all time, right? I don't know how many gold medals she has as a player and a coach, but it's like, 
Aaron it's Hammer, like I think. three or four, right? Yeah. yeah. And, and one of the things when she was working with USA um, that we were hearing down the pipeline was, you know, hey, what does it matter? I don't care if um, how they get the ball to the target as long as they do it a lot. Yeah. You know? And, you know, that didn't sit well, I don't think, with a lot of coaches because we were all searching for this, you know, system and, you know, something that we could be teaching our players or the young USA players in the pipeline to then one day be able to do those things at the elite level. And I, I yeah. think now I'm starting to understand what she was getting at. Um, isn't it about performance? Isn't it about our ability to pass well and, and increase our chances to, to side out? Well, if that's the case, then it, don't I only have a problem if, it's not happening as, as often as we need it to. Right. And uh, you and I have talked about that. Mm -hmm. And that's when the discussion starts about, you know, okay, how are we going to achieve the result, the consistent result that we want? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and being able to work together collaboratively uh, to do it with the athlete, which I, I think gets more sustainable buy-in um, and then gets results that are, that are longer lasting. Mm -hmm. um, but it also is an investment in time and, and sometimes you may not feel like you got a lot of time, you know, and, uh, and that, that's the, the trade-off piece is, you know, when, when do we have time to include the athlete in the process? Um, and when do we need to see, you know, a difference in action immediately? Yeah. I, Off season versus in season. Right. Right. No question. I, yeah, there's certainly <laughs> – here you are in the, the tie-breaking set, right? It's, yeah. you know, it's 13 all. This is your last time out. It's like, well, I don't know how much time I have for you to, like, <laughs> figure this thing out on your own because right now here's what we need. And, um, yeah. you know, a absolutely there's going to be a time and place for everything. But, uh, but you know, certainly when we're talking about, like, um, I don't know, when you do have the time, when you, when you do have the opportunity to train and develop. Trust plays a, a large role in that. What's that? Obviously trust. trust. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So, um, what, did we address the three things we, t we started the video on, uh, the hard approach and selling the tip, um, mm -hmm. and drawing the arm back. I know we, we, we covered that. And the other thing, the third thing I think I mentioned was, um, I was going to make a case for how the arm's not always starting fast and then slowing down. And I yeah. think we, I think we did those things, right? Yes. And, yes, and we more. Did. So, uh, the, the other thing that I said is that I don't think it's going to look different between genders and, and across ages. Right. Mm -hmm. So I want to, you know, show this here a little bit. No, we already showed that one. Mm -hmm. Um, check the volume. I don't know what the volume is. Going to be. We don't really want volume. Yeah, we'll put it at two. From Gabby, Natalia goes again, tip to mid court, right in the middle of all the U.S. players, and nobody apart from. Uh, so let's take a look at what tipping off speed and roll shot looks like here in in the women's game. I think there's, you know, that's kind of a good one. Uh, a, yeah. a bit of a hard approach or relative, right? And that's the thing, right? When we talk about these situations that are going to dictate things, um, a lot of times things are going to be relative to what uh, affordances are, are there for me in that moment. This is not a full on approach, right? Look, at she transitioned yeah. to the 10 foot line. And uh, here it's a, high ball that she has to re readjust to and, and hesitate and wait a little bit. So she does that, then gets into the hard double arm, you know, backswing. And mm -hmm. I don't know that, you know, so those things there are deceptive, right? We're thinking, oh man, she's going to, she's going to hammer this thing. Um, I don't know if her arm gets but back. Yeah, it doesn't, ahead. it doesn't. Well, it does a little bit. There's the elbow, but 
you know, it's a, it's a hard double arm lift, you know, backswing double arm lift, but then, you know, her hand almost goes directly to the ball. Yeah. With this quick contact. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's yeah, I what, you know, that's what tipping looks like that there, it's yeah. a range, you know, and as coaches, oh, I want to make a whole nother video on that. <laughs> it, again, are we seeing the arm speed up and then slow down? I don't think so. And, and I think the reason for that is, is, should be obvious. It's, if you try, at, at what point in your effort to be deceptive, um, let's talk about like basketball and, and football or rugby. You can only go so far when faking to go left. At a certain point, you're going left. <laughs> you're no longer faking it. You know what yeah. I mean? And, uh, and if you get to, if you cross that line, you're not going to be able to fake and go back the other way, certainly fast enough or, or quickly enough or whatever. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if this is a great analogy, but imagine if you're in a car chase, right? I don't know why you would be, you shouldn't, <laughs> but you're going at these high speeds and you're going to fake like you're going left and then you're going to try to turn right. Your car could go out of control, right? If right. you, <laughs> if you, go left and then abruptly go right. You're gonna spin out or flip over. Uh, and the other side, okay, well, if, if I have to turn right, well, I can only fake and pretend to go left so much uh, before I end up going that way. And, and at that limit, at that point, I have to turn right. And unfortunately, it may not be all that deceptive to the cops chasing me from behind. Would you agree? Agreed. And, and that's what I wanted to, to point out. It's the, why do we get so frustrated when a player tips the ball and the opponent digs it? It's not because of the technique, uh, you know, and they didn't go fast to slow. Um, no. it, it has to do with, uh, with other things. Like the, the situation was so obvious that a tip had to happen or right. Um, or the defense had to be, you know, have to be lucky that the ball was just tipped to them, whether they're in the right place or, right, or not, you know. Um, yeah. I think part of it has to do with alignment, too. I mean, Brazil's in a rotational defense there, so right back is just sitting there. And as soon as, you know, she's already released to go get the ball in that spot um, on, on that previous clip. Is it this one here? Yeah, this is it here. So she's sitting there already. Yeah. Um, and so defensively, it's easier for her to make a read. But if they're not in rotational defense and right back is – so I think defense plays a, a role in success and failure as well. And sometimes we don't control that. I mean, look at the difference there. Mm -hmm. Our right back is way, way deep the, and so this is, is this is what they're giving up right now. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we talk about, you know, have to, want to. Um, I have to because the situation that, you know, I'm, I'm not on time, you know, uh, you know, middle two up in front, tip to two and four. I mean, these are all common um, statements uh, that we, we give to players. And uh, sometimes it's, it's uh, you know, hey, this, this team plays this defense and we have opportunities here. Uh, take advantage when, when you're ready. Mm -hmm. um, so then it's a, a want to. Uh, versus a have to. Um, and then when we have to, it's like, hey, this is where they play and this is where they're going to be. So let's stress the other team. We may not score, but let's do our best to get, make them work for it or keep them out of system. You know, I see that. I mean, that's a completely out of system ball. <laughs> and yeah. the, the player <laughs> finds a way to be successful. This one um, here you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and she awesome. scores. I mean, what a play. Yeah, it's awesome. Uh, Look at this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm way too late. Uh, you know, and that that that's a that's just a good play. And talk about putting stress on the defense. And then here throws it at the top, throws it at her hands, and then gets another opportunity to play. Mm -hmm. uh, so, it's just smart plays. Is it live? 
and we're, they're not disguised there. It's not. It's not disguised. The the elbow wasn't getting back. Um, you know, it's it's situational. Where's the clip? Is it this one here? She throws it. Yeah. So the the elbow never got back, right? And um, and it can't always because. If her elbow goes any further back, uh, her hand won't get to the ball in time. And, and if it does, then it's going to be moving a whole lot faster than what we're looking for in tipping and driving and, and throwing the ball down to this short area of the court. Yeah. And I think that's another I'm, – I'm glad we're, we're talking about that now because, you know – in the men's game, they, they get up, they drive, they have this hang time, they can be early, and they can wait for that ball to catch up to them. And a lot of times they're going to end up hitting on their way down or shotting it on their way down. Yeah. And it's not just a men's thing. And we're seeing that here as well. But my point is um, your arm must move slower to tip and place the ball shorter. And mm -hmm. if we are going from this – this uh this traditional um strong open hitting position uh to make contact with the ball <laughs> <laughs> our hand might be moving way too fast and what you find i think and what i see uh in in my own gym with young players learning to tip we find them doing that uh, deceptive open fast and then slow and that abrupt slowing of the arm results in a tip in the bottom of the net yeah. and, and sometimes the ball doesn't even make it to the net yeah okay so so and you've seen that you know what i'm mm -hmm. talking about so i'm just going to keep playing this and what you if you have ideas that you want to turkish players try and get there Kalak be only one of the three to step none of them yeah I, the other thing I notice is they're at the, they're over the block too, and that's a and I don't know if we're going to get into the how to, um, but you're noticing that these balls are going over the block and they're not tipped over the top of the tape uh -huh. into the block, and uh, it drives me nuts. Um, and that's the part where I'm you know if we're going to tip, let's let's get it to a spot that is going to stress the team, not not put it into the forearms or the trunk of the block. Mm -hmm. um, or not give yourself an opportunity to stress or score. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the third video that I have queued up for us to watch um, is going to get into um, more of the importance and the effectiveness of tipping and how a, a tip doesn't always have to score and hit the floor for it to be effective and for it to set up another um, scoring opportunity for your side. And, yeah. um, and I think, uh, you know, I think, I, I feel like I see this a lot. And I don't mean to sound like this happens all the time, but I think it happens enough where, you know, coaches are going to get on players about tipping uh, when it, you know, as if it's like some weak sort of scared, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm scared to, to hit the ball. <laughs> yeah. And we don't have to get too far into that. But by the way, I just take a moment to give credit. Uh, this video came from um, this YouTube channel, Titans Volleyball. And I think they have uh, multiple channels. So uh, if you're not already familiar with Titans Volleyball, there's Titans Women's Volleyball uh, on YouTube. There are thousands of videos up there that are just um, amazing content and, um, and world volleyball uh, as well. I think they're to our conversation, I don't want to lose this point in my head because I'm yeah. getting old, but there's, I think there's a correlation um, between a, a, the point at which you contact the ball to tip. Um, and if you're, in, as we talk about that, if we delay by trying to work so hard to disguise the opportunity, this tip, we lose the opportunity to actually be effective because we're, we're losing that timing where our hand gets the ball at a better, a higher contact point to be able to direct and, and be able to tip over the top of the block without it being really up and down, giving the other team extra time to react and go get it. Um, yes. And so I, I think there is a, a direct correlation between. 
between the trying to disguise and and the opportunity to get your hand to the ball as soon as as soon as you can or have to uh, to be able to put the other team out of system. Yeah. And, and I just want to throw out there, if you're listening to this, you know, uh, like podcast style or whatever, this is, this is the moment in the podcast where you back it up a 30 seconds to, to play that part again. And, and you just make such a good point that, you know, decept, being deceptive has its advantages. Certainly it does, but it also has some disadvantages and, and you don't want to miss those opportunities to beat them with speed, to tip that ball before, um, the players on the other side have more time to set up or even see what's happening and reposition and react uh, or anticipate. So um, uh, absolutely, you know, rewind and, and listen to, to Jason uh, talk about that again. Okay. Um, how are we doing on time? We're doing okay. Absolutely. Okay. So this is the last video that I had and, um, and you know, this is our, our club. Um, our 18s team, 18 forefront. And what I want to get into at this point in the video um, is more of the effectiveness of tipping. And we'll just look at some examples and, and discuss why, um, why I think it's important, especially when you're working with, uh, with juniors level, uh, to, to not have this idea that tipping is just your players being scared. And sometimes they will be scared and that's okay. All right. We don't have to like beat them up for that. What to me makes this so effective um, is, okay, let's see what she does. All right. So maybe some, some back arm lift there, but right away you can see this elbow did not get all the way back right that t-rex sort of it's it's low it's dropping it's down um can i frame by what makes this effective is that it's placed in this open area that is essentially equidistant from all floor defenders and uh, look at that, like we're all social distancing equally from this ball right now. And, and it's so effective because that's what makes it unclear as to whose ball it is. Or to say it another way, um, there's some innocent bystander effect here, right? Mm -hmm. Like, oh, someone else, someone else is gonna go for that. That's someone else's ball. Yeah. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. I, it, you can almost see it on their faces <laughs> from this far away. Yeah. <laughs> yep. That's a great tip. I'm, I'm mad here, by the way. Those tips are, yeah. oh man, doesn't your heart just skip a beat when you see those? They're so yes. hard to do. And um, look at that. That is like perfectly timed and placed from a veteran player. Okay, so here, didn't score, right? right? But Jason, tell us why this was effective. Because we, we get a predictable play and it looks like a, a little down ball opportunity. We're ready to play defense. It's almost as good as a free ball. And then we were pushing, we're making the other team make a play. And in this case, they didn't. And so we score on their error because we stressed them on this play. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Took out their outside. Okay. Yeah. Now she, t fortunately for us, right, she totally mishandled that. I don't know that you're going to get a player shanking the ball like that every time. And I think, you know, let's give her credit. If we did that again, it probably would be a good pass. But yeah. There's some examples that we're going to watch here um, that demonstrate why even when the off blocker passes a perfect ball, why that can be effective. I mean, I can you pause that for a second? Yeah. I got a question for you. So you, you see this play develop and you see her coming down the middle and the left front blocker comes in to block. So you're saying you're seeing the, the outsides coming down the, the middle here. 
Yeah. And now you're talking about this outside blocker. Go ahead. Yes. And so when, as a hitter, are we training, talking about this now opportunity for her to tip into this spot? Because, um, you know, is this libero uh, telling us by the way she's playing that this is where she's going to play and this is an open opportunity for us to be able to tip and score? Because I, she didn't even move. Uh, and there's a lot of space between the blocker and that libero. Yeah. Is that something we train and talk about? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's where you, you know, you build in to these, uh, these portions of your practice or video sessions where you can talk about the nuances of, um, I guess, strategies like this, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, um, and, and I think it's, what I, I think we need to get at is uh, we can't always be so focused on the technical training and development of what we generally think uh, skill acquisition is. Mm -hmm. um, because what I'm learning now is skill acquisition is, is not so much someone learning how to do this particular skill in this particular way, this technique. Skill acquisition is about an athlete's development of these uh, uh, highly adaptive skills that are, are, are permanent and, and durable and consistent through time. Um, and, and, and it's not so much this, uh, you know, draw that arm back, deceive them, and, and, you know, fake the, the hard hit before you tip it. Well, I think this illustrates the point that there's, she's not being deceptive because she hasn't contacted the ball yet and her shoulder's forward, her hand's ready to tip and that libero hasn't moved. Yeah, she like goes up showing the hand right away, does, doesn't she? Yeah. yeah, and I mean, and the ball oh, yeah. hits the floor on the tip. And so, oh I mean, yeah. It was a, it's a great play, and it's a great execution of, of that attack, I believe, as well. Isn't this what you were talking about um, a moment ago, though? It's, there's this opportunity here. And the opportunity yeah. is to, to get the ball at a high point and get it to the ground uh, yeah. before that defender's ready. Yeah. If she yeah. were to draw that arm back, look how high that contact point is. Yeah. Get up there, Ryan. Good job. <laughs> And, and, and drops it right in there. That, that's what you were talking about, right? Yes. Because then her only other option really is to, is she going to hit low seam into the block or is she going to go cross body to the right back defender? Yeah. And I mean, that, that's a, it's just a great play and a good contact point. It's a good attack option. And it, so to get to your point as well, it's like, it, this isn't a, hey, you were afraid to hit. Um, this was a tactical decision that she executed really well. And for coaches that are wondering – how do you, okay, well, okay, how does NPJ teach that? You mm -hmm. know, Mike, Jason, how do you, how, what do your drills look like? Well, one of them looks like short court or, or narrow skinny court, two on two, three on three. Sometimes it can look like half court, more on more, or even full court. And what we do is we just say, um, we, we put a constraint on the game being that no one is allowed to hit the ball hard. Um, and it's subjective, of course, but what our players, what we teach them is, hey, fair is fair, right? Like if you feel like, you know, someone just drove that ball a little too hard, right? Like, like in any other pickup game, right? Call your own fouls or whatever. <laughs> if you feel like that was not um, part of the rule set, then we'll just replay it. No problem but we put this constraint on there so that they're forced to look for other ways uh, to get the ball to the ground. And what, what shrinking the court space often helps is it makes it even harder for them to score by tips and roll shots. And eventually what the game uh, teaches, what these kids start to discover is that the only way to score consistently is to get that ball quickly at a high point and, uh, and aggressively throw it to the ground faster than the, the opponent is capable of, of, of reacting. Yeah. 
and and that's what our our drills would be designed to you know, do this straight sled approach that the game teaches the game. You don't have to make a line and toss balls and have them learn those things. Okay, I believe what happened here was we took the setter out. So yeah. um, maybe you can't know that this area will score, mm -hmm. but instead of trying to move the ball more left or more right, you know, uh, drop it to the setter, drop it to a front row player who will not be allowed to touch that, that next ball, right? but to be involved in the way that allows them to score. Confusion, down ball. Ooh. Boom, there it is. Yep. <laughs> and again, every response from the opposition here is out of system. So there are three out of system balls back. Mm -hmm. And we and then, you know, persistence prevails and, and we score. Mm -hmm. so. And, you know, here's a kid, our setter. I believe she watches a ton of video. And I know she does. She watches a lot of video. She's always texting me when I'm not uploading our matches uh, mm. to, to YouTube. But I, I, I believe she's watching more than that, too, because, you know, <laughs> we yeah. don't teach this. I mean, you know, and my, my question would be, you know, because I, 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 I've learned in watching a lot of your guys' film and watching his play is, you know, never to assume that she doesn't know. <laughs> because that libero comes way inside the middle and for her to then make the libero get up and come all the way back across the floor to pick that ball up knowing she has that left front blocker I mean is she just doing something instinctual is she doing something technical um, we should ask her but I think when I actually I've, I've, I've made clips of her progression through a, a, a game and it is just incredible um, she's done a really nice job. Adam, he, he runs our offense. He's done an incredible job um, over the years uh, here. And, and to be fair, Adam does work with Izzy on throwing the ball. And I've, I've watched them have sessions and discussions on, on how to attack as a setter. That's something that he took on, um, you know, early on when, when working with Izzy. So we, he, we do teach some of these things, but we don't teach this exact footwork, movement, uh, whatever, right? We're just planting these ideas. We're, we're giving them these, these movement solutions, these, these vocab words for them to go and, and, and write their own story and, um, and, and be the creators of, of you know, how they evolve. Um, as 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 players and um and and that's the important thing that i want to be celebrated because we should love it when players do stuff like that you know look at that so it's yeah. how about this deceptiveness right let me show the tip Come on, yeah. folks, bring it in. Bring it on. Whoop. So, uh, I, I think I think we, we might feel like, oh, all this this there's things that are just advanced, right? And and we're gonna talk to beginners about the, the, the fundamental stuff. Yeah, I mean okay, but like how old do you think you have to be to like know that you can sell a tip and maybe push it a little bit farther. I mean, I, I don't know. I so, think, I think part of that is having the freedom to explore and practice so too, and being rewarded um, for that exploration. Definitely. Here's just one more example of um, the, the elbow's not getting back. We're not, we're, we're getting the arm out extended for a high point so we can forcefully throw it to the ground. Maddie knows that she's showing it here. But the challenge there is, hey, Libero, can you beat the ball to the spot? And even if you do, 
how in the heck are you going to get that ball up into a spot where it's not going to be a free ball back over? Right. Right. I mean, that's a pancake at best. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the effectiveness here, putting it right mm -hmm. in between these two wing defenders, right? Okay. So if the setter gets it, actually, that's not fair. That's not our setter. The, the advantage here is you're placing the ball in between two very aggressive players. Um, Bridget in the right back and, and our libero here in, in the left back. I think that's Kennedy. Um, <laughs> we, we don't want to get hurt. It's yeah. human. It's, it's human nature, you know, and I'm, I, I hate when I hate how I used to say, I'd rather you two collide than see the ball hit the ground because what that, what I was saying is I don't care if you get hurt. <laughs> I care more about the ball getting uh -huh. off, staying off the ground than you two bumping heads and, and, and getting hurt. Yeah. You know, uh, someone should have slapped me in the head. And hmm. I think some people tried to, and uh, you know, I was too young to know any better. And I'm, I'm sure I got offended back then. I got slapped in the head a few times on that. So <laughs> Matter of fact, you might have slapped me on the head a few times on that. <laughs> um, and we get a free ball out of it. Yeah, so. totally. What? Where was this? That's what you were talking about. Okay, that yeah. wasn't a pancake, but it's essentially what you were talking about. You got yeah. the free ball. Yeah, it, that was just so well placed in between – um, you know, if you, it's hard to see, but it, the mm -hmm. off blocker and the libero are yeah. about equidistant from, uh, where this ball lands. And, and that's the important part when we talk about, you know, tipping and how to do it effectively, we, we bring up that point and we say, Hey, you know what, first of all, we let them try it. And then I tell them, here are the things that I'm observing. And it's true. I'm observing us trying to throw the ball around. And a lot of times we're actually missing the court. And other times it's just too obvious whose ball it is. And so instead of many people having confusion over who should be going for it, we end up with this clear, distinct, uh, that's her ball. That's my ball. That's your ball. And now we lose that element of hesitation um, and, and also that element of, oh, I don't want to get, I don't want to collide. And, and that's kind of what happens here, right? They both made effort, but that last little bit of, I don't want to get hurt and I don't want to hurt my team. And you can take advantage of that. Yeah, Ryan's tipping this game season is just uh, amazing. Yeah. And so the last part of this video is effective roll shot. Level. Right into that sort of campfire donut area of the court. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> but again, there's not a fast or slow. There isn't yeah. a that elbow's not it's it's high, uh, mm -hmm. but it's not getting back all that far. Yeah. So uh, I mean, could we say that Pete that we're getting the opponent to react to our aggressive backswing and double arm lift, not necessarily to our shoulder being back or forward? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think if um, you know we don't have the same height or hang time um, as some of these guys that are playing at 11 feet, but yeah, you know, there's that certainly these lead up movements when possible. Um, can, can allow you to be more uh, deceptive. Absolutely. I mean, that, that wasn't deceptive from start to finish, but it was very effective. I mean, she's doing a, a – oh, okay, she had, she had a backswing in there. I thought maybe she rocked her arms a little bit to, to get her hands up there faster. But there, that's big. Um, mm -hmm. but there's that T-Rex, right? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's not a, I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but a lot of times it comes off as like, 
this negative thing like oh this this t-rex elbow lo, elbow drop you know why people do that all the time right is because it's like a fundamental movement that's required to tip it <laughs> yeah. yeah your arm must be bent and then extend if you're going to push that ball up and forward if you're throwing it down it doesn't have to be bent or start from that low position but, uh, he certainly has to roll and push that ball up over that block. But there's, you know, part of what I'm seeing that's being successful between between the two of them doing this, it seems like Bridget and, and uh, forgive me, I can't remember her name, but Audra. Uh, Audra, thank you. Uh, is that the contact point is still pretty high, um, and they're able to, and I think you, you know, using a term that you've shaping the ball early and getting that ball inside of that. Um, you know, lots of surface area contact on the ball and uh, being able to just extend that hand. Um, mm -hmm. But the contact point is high enough to where it's going just over the top of the block. Um, because this is a full backswing. This is aggressive. And yet it is not the, the, the arm track prep and, you know, a motion to attack the ball is not it's not aggressive it's not shoulder back it's not torquing and and releasing the shoulder to whip at the ball mm -hmm. there's none of that deception at all and yet it's really effective and i think at some point here she knows probably around here she knows this ball is going a little tight and too wide you know what i mean um and and players whether they're conscious of that or not you know, um, partly that set and situation, you know, where Bridget set up from, right? Okay, she had to pass kind of short, so her approach was kind of taken away from her, you know. So a little bit of there is being, is dictating um, this. Yeah. But then also, you know, there's an element of what she actually is in control here, you know, to, to execute that. Yeah. So, I would so, say in a normal situation, just as we talked about Taylor Sanders getting a one on one and being in rhythm and in tempo and in the right locations. And that's what that is, is a, it's almost a no block. It's a trailing one block where um, you know, Bridge is going to hammer that ball if all things are in system. So that, so, and, and that libero has probably seen that, experienced it, defended it, and then you know, she goes off speed. And the libero is taking her cue from the ball, not from the hitter, and, and makes a late response. Yeah, um, and Bridget was lighting them up. You, you we're not showing any of the hard hit balls, um, but oh, oh yeah, they're, more often than not, that ball is coming at them hard, and uh, and that is certainly on a defender's mind. And a coach might even been saying, "Hey, the next time that girl gets set, like you got to be here." Um, yeah. And and we as players, we get so focused on that that we totally miss what's in front of us, which is that um, this set is forcing her to tip right now. And yeah. so we forget that, okay, I know, like you said, when everything lines up, my butt needs to be back here for that hard hit ball. But when it's not being lined up, that information from the coach, that tactic, uh, mm -hmm. that instruction should not apply and should not distract me from like, you know, these other areas of, of the game that are going on suppose that's another discussion as well <laughs> <laughs> yes 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 absolutely there's some not effective stuff forget what i put in here okay that's what we're talking about trying to move that ball a little too much yeah and and it's very subtle but the way that ball is being set from the hitters right to left carries some momentum yeah. and um early on you're gonna see when players are are tipping a ball that is already moving right to left and they're going to push it from right to more left, mm -hmm. you know, that little bit of energy that ball has to begin with is, is why it ends up, you know, less than a foot out of bounds. Okay, actually, that was pretty effective. I don't know why yeah. that's in this part. <laughs> <laughs> but it put, puts our defender on the ground. Uh, we dig it lower than this player's shoulders. 
and uh, requires yeah. a pretty incredible play, right? Which yeah. is made. So I mean, you can't argue with that. I mean, that's effective. That, that's that's totally effective. <laughs> Bad job, <laughs> mate. Bad editor. All right, there, there we go. Yeah. So I, right. And I think what this is, it's going to be hard to see, mm -hmm. but I think this player is trying to hard sell the hard hit. Look at that. So big double arm, arm drive back. And uh, I obviously have the benefit of having coached against her several times, so I know that she does that. Um, but, you know, if we can't get that arm moving slow enough, the ball's going to go too far. Yeah. And, and that's why this ends up, you know, maybe not entirely because of um, fast and then slow. Uh, this is just an example of how um, when your arm moves too fast, it's, it's going to go too far. Yeah. Does, lo does location play a role in that as well? Location of where she decided to yeah. hit it or? Yeah. Because she could have spun it to the middle of the floor and might have scored, actually. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think totally it's like this inside, this ball that's hanging a little bit inside relative to how wide this hitter's approach is coming from, this lefty, mm -hmm. um, would probably make you think this ball is going to be hit cross, right? Yeah. And yeah. a lot of balls do get hit cross. Um, and so maybe, you know, trying to go against what might be obvious – and, and, and throw that down the line um, certainly didn't work in her favor there. And, and I think I also probably put this in there because an off speed and tip to a libero, generally speaking, is not a good idea. Right. You know, and. Um, <laughs> but in this case, you had brought up earlier that, you know, ma making, making players decide whose ball it is. And in this case, you know, and differentiating between there's no question this is that player's ball. And that's what this, that's what this swing is, is there's no question that this is the little barrel's ball. Uh -huh. uh, could we slide it? Could they have slide it in, you know, into more of a position where other people have to make a decision to be able to, to make the play. And I think she's capable of doing that because she very easily and nonchalantly spun the ball right to the libero. Yeah, she's actually a very good player. Yeah, well, you can, you can tell by the contact point. <laughs> it's, a, <laughs> it's a great spin. It's just in a really bad location, obviously. Why, why, would, why was that bad? Why was that uh, uh, not effective? Was that because of us or because the libero made a good read and a good play? Um, you know, I, I think this is, to, to be honest, I, I mm. think you see – most of the time uh, a player is going to get that ball mm -hmm. and uh, and the, the bet or the gamble and the risk that you're taking, I think is if this doesn't work out, you know, uh, my team could be in trouble. Yeah. And, uh, and when these tips to the, you know, zone four area of the court don't work out, whether it's the libero or the off blocker, I think you, you typically see a good pass um, that can result in some middle or uh, mm -hmm. some other choices. But um, yeah, we ended up okay though. And what I'm sad to see that's not in here, um, so I must have put it in a different video. So we'll save it for another time. But um, I guess what I'll leave people with is this bonus uh, content. And that is, um, when you tip and roll shot to the off blocker, particularly the outside, um, you generally don't see that player then also get set. Um, and oftentimes what we're trying to do at this level, and even at the college level, is we're trying to slow down that outside hitter, that kid that's going to get the ball a lot, that's going to – hit at a high kill percentage um, and we need to slow her down and, and, and manage her uh, so we have a shot to win. Well, what better way than to ensure that the setter doesn't set her? Make her dig the tip, 
make her dig the roll shot. And if it's a good pass, I'll bet you a dollar, you see the middle get set. If it's a slightly not so good pass, I'll bet you a dollar that the right side player gets set. And if there is no right side player, I would still bet you that same dollar um, that then the back row player gets set. And if we were to play it 10 times, I, I think I'm going to win eight or nine dollars. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I would agree with that. And I think the data would prove that out. Um, mm -hmm. um, and I know I, because we've talked about that as a team and what strategies can we put in place to make you an effective hitter um, digging from an under off block position. Mm -hmm. um, and we've altered footwork. We've increased tempo. Um, you know, we've, we've had them uh, going up and then back down to the middle of the floor and having the middle go to the three gap. And, uh, you know, we've worked over time. I would say we've worked quite a lot on it and I haven't seen it in the game. And mm -hmm. what they do is if it's a good pass, they go to the middle. Mm -hmm. And if it's a not so good pass, they go to the right side. It and, uh, or, if the setter's in the front row, maybe setter dumps. Um, if I have an aggressive setter, which I do right now, um, or they go back row. Yeah. And, and knowing that data, um, when you're putting game plans together, you're, you're coming up with like these, these advanced systems and tactics. You can plan for that. You know, yeah. my, my team, we were, we we're just starting to get to it. We we're like, okay, we're going to set ourselves up to trap the middle. When we know we're going to tip and take out that off block outside, that right front needs to move in because you're no longer mm -hmm. responsible for blocking anybody out there. And, right. uh, and, and, and we need your help, you know, just cause there's no hitter over there. doesn't mean you, you get to take a play off, right? Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> come help us over here, <laughs> slide in here, you know? And, uh, and we'll put what, what, how great it would be to put three blockers in a smaller area of the court. Uh, what an advantage um, you would, you would give yourself at, at a, in a situation where you're already at a disadvantage because you have to block. Yeah. Well, awesome. Um, man, I, that was great. And if, if you and I are the only ones that really benefit from having watched and listened to this whole thing, cause we were <laughs> having yeah. the conversation, uh, that, that was fantastic. And I really feel like we we're able to take the discussion uh, on, on tipping and off speed shots uh, and and give it more value and time that I think it really deserves. And um, and I think too often, you know, this subject area is just um, not even pushed aside. It's just like never even on the table. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Any Agreed. last words of, of wisdom for the betterment of the group? Um, you know, I, th I think it, you know, can be, I think we have to look at it not always just about scoring opportunities. Um, when we have to tip, can we stress? And does the stress yield an opportunity for us to score a point later? And I think there's value in that. And a lot of times our players in particular, whether it's coach influence or not, the players want to score. And they perceive their job to score on every single opportunity to attack. And that's not necessarily true. Um, Sometimes there's a lot of value in taking care of the ball and putting it in a place that we can receive the ball back in a predictable manner or in a way that we can turn it around and attack uh, with rhythm. Um, there's value in that. Um, it's hard, I think, for players to break through and, and see that and feel that. Um, and it's hard for coaches to um, work through the process of, of understanding um, you know, what, what our options are and what we can do. And we want to score too. We want to get to 25 uh, before the other team. And, uh, but uh, establishing that trust and practice with players, helping them explore their athleticism to be able to be effective um, attackers. And I think uh, the tip and the roll shot and the off speed shot plays a big role in varying tempo um, on your attack you keep hitting hard in the same spot every single time, pretty soon someone's just going to be there midline waiting for you to hit the ball to them. And uh, unless we vary that, and we've lost matches because of this. Um, and we, we made a big change in the middle of our season last year to really start to practice and uh, reward and, and celebrate 
uh, off-speed opportunities and effective tipping. And um, but we we made a concerted effort to do that just so we could change the mindset of our attackers. Um, and so I, I think releasing our players to be athletic and to make plays and reward it when we see it. Um, and uh, you know, for for coaches, I think that's hard, but I think it's necessary. Um, so we send the right message to the kids to to go for it and use all the options available to them. And I think, uh, you know, what I learned today in the, in the tipping part of it is that it's more about, you know, contacting at, a, at an appropriate contact point to be effective uh, rather than, you know, trying to get the shoulder back. And, and I'm thinking in terms of defense right now, which is a different discussion because I'm always on my players about what are they watching. Um, and in this case, I'm, I'm seeing attackers being effective tippers and they're not bringing the shoulder back, um, mm-hmm. you know, and yet they're, they're still being effective and, and it's about that contact point. So, yeah. Um, anyway, and a it, little bit I, rambling there. Sorry. No, no, that was great. I just want to, to your point, it's, it's like you said, they weren't doing it wrong here, right? Like they weren't yeah. violating some, some, some hard, fast rule and, and they certainly weren't being an exception to the rule. They were actually like, and that's the whole point. This stuff happens a lot and we're not teaching it or acknowledging it. And we should be. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jason. You are the man. Um, and I'm just so appreciative of not only you taking the time to, to have this conversation with me, uh, but also be a huge part of, um, you know, what we're trying to do, not just w- with our club, but I think more of like what we're trying to do for our region um, and, and volleyball community as a whole. And that is share our expertise, um, dive into a little bit of, you know, what we think is right or, or whatever, and hopefully, you know, spark some engagement, uh, some interest from other coaches here in the area uh, to, to, to join in the discussion as well. And, and, maybe even tell us where we're wrong, you know, um, or where we're right, you know, we'll accept that too. (laughs) (laughs) But thank you. Thank you. It's been a real pleasure having this conversation also, um, you know, getting to work with you and to know you as a coach and as a person, um, since, since, uh, since you joining, uh, join in forces with us. I thank you for the opportunity to be here for sure. And, uh, you've done more for, for my coaching, uh, advancement and learning, um, I kind of got into a stagnated level there for a little bit and just lack of opportunity. And, uh, I ran into, to you guys, and that was a big point of, uh, emphasis on, in our discussions. And, and, uh, I'm, I feel like I'm a better coach and I get to be a, an opportunity to be a better coach every day, uh, with your influence. So thank you very much for all the work that, uh, you put into creating these opportunities for us. Thank you. Cool. Well, uh, We'll leave it at that. Um, check out uh, check out the uh, the rest of my videos on on YouTube, um, and uh, and also please be a part of the conversation here and and join in and and let us know what you think uh, in the comment section below. And because uh, so few of you ever do comment, uh, I usually read all of them and and get back to all of you. So uh, I will continue to do that. (laughs) Thanks so much. And uh, uh, we will, we'll catch you in the next one. Have a good day.